Welcome to Exabyte Technologies. My name is Richard Jones. I'm a senior sales engineer here at Exabyte. And today I'm going to give you an, a quick overview of the uh, PowerEdge FX2 platform. The platform is an ideal converged infrastructure utilizing small uh, building blocks, the chassis. It provides the flexibility of a rack server uh, with the density of a blade chassis. It allows you to run uh, multiple workloads. Uh, for instance, a great platform for dense virtualization. Uh, if you're looking to do server consolidation and reduce power and cooling, it's an excellent platform uh, because within the platform, you have all kinds of configuration options uh, from two and four socket servers uh, in quarter, half and full width server sleds uh, and storage nodes. Uh, the FD332, you can support up to three of these in the chassis. Uh, which has 16 two and a half inch uh, hot pluggable uh, SSDs or hard disk drives uh, with a raw capacity of 184 terabytes with 3.84 uh, SSDs, for instance. The networking uh, out the back uh, supports 10 gigabit RJ45 uh, SFP plus with uh, redundant fabrics for high availability. And with the ability to add additional I.O. cards uh, with eight standard PCIe slots, you can add high speed networking, for instance, or if you need 25 gigabit network. It even has the ability to add your uh, SAS or fiber channel HBAs for external storage. And since the platform is converged and since the platform is a 2U rack mounted server platform, power is supplied by uh, two redundant uh, server power supplies. So th the platform is converged uh, since you do have storage computed network within the platform. So if you'd like to dive deeper into this platform, uh, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to assist you in giving you a, a deeper overview of the platform. But what I'd like to do is show you uh, in a demo uh, some of the flexibility to run workloads. Some, I've got some simple workloads, but uh, you'll see the power of the FX2 uh, chassis through through this demo. Okay, let's jump into this demo. I need to log into the chassis management controller. Just type in its IP. And it brings you to the login. So when we first come into the chassis management controller, it's just going to give us the dashboard is just going to give us an overview of the FX2. As you can see in my lab, I have uh, an FX2 with four SC430 uh, uh, server nodes. I have two FD332 uh, uh, storage nodes. Uh, this is the 10 gigabit pass through. This is the chassis management controller, two redundant power supplies. This is the PCIe slots. Uh, each of these, there's four of them. Each of them get two of them. There's eight slots. Each of those have two PCIe slots attached to them. Uh, you can see internal fans. You can see that they're all green in the airflow. So if you see green, that's good. There's no critical alerts out there. So in my uh, for my environment for this quick uh, demo, I, I have these servers set up. This is my uh, CentOS machine, uh, and he's attaching to my TrueNAS NFS mounted uh, storage array, which is using the FD332 as its backend storage. This is my ESX host that has uh, its storage with this FD332, which is attached to another TrueNAS uh, server with uh, iSCSI. So eventually this environment will be a full vSAN because vSAN, minimally you need four nodes in a vSAN. And with this amount of storage, I have a great uh, virtualized environment for uh, virtual SAN. And it can scale by adding another chassis, more nodes, uh, so I can scale up and scale out. So let's uh, kind of walk through this demo. I'm going to launch my iDRAC GUIs for my TrueNAS server. So let's get that one launched. And then also launch my uh, CentOS host. We want to get that running also. 
And that way, when we do launch this, it takes us directly to the server's iDRAC. So now I can manage this server directly. I could actually type in the IP address right here and get directly to that host without going through the chassis management controller also. So when I launch my console, it's going to bring up uh, that server's booted. It's going to show us the actual true NAS uh, interface. Uh, and it's telling me to get to the user interface in the dashboard to go to 10.10.6.138. So let's go take a look at that. Let's go to 10.10.6.138. And that'll take me directly to the dashboard for the true NAS server, my NFS server. Let's log into that guy. So in here, you can see that I'm set up. I've got uh, my storage pools. Uh, here is the path to my NFS server or my NFS mounted uh, true NAS server for my NAS. Uh, it talk, here's my interface that it's talking through the network. There's that IP address. Um, this, ad, this one is down. So it gives me information about the, uh, the actual um, storage that's attached to this true NAS server. So when I go over to my uh, CentOS machine, my CentOS server, I'm going to launch its console. So when we launch into him, uh, we come out, we come, I've got the, the GUI running. Typically, you would just have a, a, a normal terminal to get to your, your server. So if we type mount, we can see right now that you know I don't have any, any servers mounted. Uh, we know that when we go back to our um, TrueNAS console, that uh, this is the path, right? And then also it is Exabyte NAS. So what I need to do here is, let's say I want to mount that NAS server so that it's not mounted currently. So I'm going to type the mount command to mount it. It's minus T for NFS, so I'm mounting, I have an NS mount. And then we knew the path was 10.10.6.138. And I have to give it the path to my true NAS mount point. So that's MNT at X byte NAS. This is a root uh, user, so I'm just going to mount it to his root, his directory, his home directory, root slash true NAS. And so now you'll see if I type the mount command, it shows that it's mounted. Here it is. This is my mount to true NAS. So let's just CD over to that. And and you currently see if we do a directory, there's no files in there. So let's put some files in there. Yeah, let's put about four files in there. All right, so now we see that those files are there. Let's, let's just take a look. Well, here's my mount point. So there's the files I created. So you could see that they're they're available, right? So, um, so now um, we know that it's mounted, right? Uh, so I could, you know, unmount these guys and they won't be available to me. But uh, so just a simple show that you can actually have this running a, a NAS server for NFS. So I, let's unmount that. Um, I just have a quick batch command to unmount this. So I don't have to type that each time. Uh, I type mount, it's no longer mounted. Uh, I shouldn't be able to see the files here any longer. Correct, so that's not there. So but so it just shows the, the versatility of the, of the uh, FX2. And so when I go over here and I look at my, let's look at my ESX host real quick, showing that I can run uh, ESX. Let's go ahead and launch its GUI. And then when, when you launch the console for this guy, you're gonna see, this is my ESX host. I, I attached with my uh, ESX client to this address, 10.10.6.242. So let's go over to there, 10. 
0.242. All right, I'm now in my ESX client. I'm logging to my ESXi host. And as you can see, I, I've I've got a at least one uh, one workstation running on this as a um, as a Linux host. But right now, I just want to kind of just uh, tell you right now, if you if you really want to dig deeper into the FX2 and the overall chassis, uh, I would love to kind of be able to give you uh, an overview. So reach out to us if you have any questions uh, that you would like to have a, a demo or kind of go over a, a deeper dive into the FX2 and, and use cases and how you might set this up. 